So welcome to the fall of 2016. Maybe some of you had a Saturday or Sunday class and you've already had class. For most of you, this is probably your first class. It is certainly my first class, 8 a.m. Monday morning. Gotta love it, right? Um, so this is Digital Tools for Designers. It's Architecture 135. Um, this, hopefully, is where you all should be, right? Let's hope, let, let, let's fingers crossed. Um, OK, so a little bit about me so that you know where I'm coming from. And I apologize for those of you that have already had me once. Guess what? You get to hear it all again, right? Such is life. So my name is Grant Adams. Uh, I'm an associate professor of architecture here, which means that I'm a part-time faculty member. Uh, I was actually counting it up last night. I've been here for 18 semesters. Uh, I was originally hired to teach this class in 2007. And so somehow I've stuck around long enough, and, and they seem to like me enough to let me keep teaching it. Um, so uh, fingers crossed that it turns out to be beneficial to you, right? Uh, my email is gadams at dvc.edu. Please don't hesitate to email me. Uh, if you get stuck on something, go ahead and email me. You never know, right? The other thing that I'll ask you is if, and we'll go through this a little bit later on in the slides, if you're not going to be here, just shoot me an email ahead of time, right? Or text me. We'll get to that. Um, and just let me know, hey, I'm not going to be there. That means I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for you, right? The worst thing that I could have is to be sitting around waiting for Sean to show up, and he doesn't show up, and then everything starts late, et cetera. I'm not faking on you, right? I also give you my phone number, so if you want to text me, you're more than welcome to. Chances are, if you call me, I won't answer. <laughs> I reserve that right. Uh, if you text me and it's in the middle of the night at 2 AM, chances are I won't answer, but I might. You never know, right? So I reserve the right not to answer anything, but at the same time, I want to be as accessible as possible for you guys so that you can, you can get me when you need me. Uh, my office hours, I changed it this semester a little bit from last semester to try to accommodate this class over the other class. Uh, I'm going to, on Monday mornings, I'll be here from 7 to 8 AM, so before class if you need to talk to me. And then I teach a class right after this one from 11 to 2, so my office hours are on Wednesday will be from 2 to 3 PM, so it's after that class. Okay? Truth is, I get here at 6 in the morning every morning anyway. So if you want to talk to me in the morning and you want to get up early, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, th this room will be unlocked at 6 uh, every morning. So if you need to do work when the semester starts to crunch, et cetera. I know you guys are all students. And the thought of getting up and being here at 6 AM is probably really, really scary. And that's totally OK. I don't expect you to be here. But I want you to know that it's available for you. Um, all that being said, because I'm part time, I'm only here on Mondays and on Wednesdays. So if you're looking for me on Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, I'm not going to be around. I have another job. I do other things. Therefore, I'm not here. Okay. Uh, a little bit more about my background so you know where I came from. I think it's, it, it's relevant for you to at least have some, some perspective on me. I have a master's degree in architecture from UC Berkeley. I graduated from UC Berkeley in 2007 with that master's degree. Uh, I did also do my undergrad degree at Berkeley uh, in architecture. So I have both the Bachelor of Arts in Architecture and the Master of Arts in Architecture. Um, I am not a traditional practicing architect. Um, I don't have clients. I don't do that sort of thing. I do, however, have a general contractor's license. And I have a real estate investment and property management firm that I, that's, my, that's me. <laughs> that's my company. So anyway, I do that on the other. Uh, I like to say the other three days, but it's really the other five days of the week because it's inevitable that you do stuff on the weekends. So that's a little bit of background for me, uh, just so you know who I am and why I'm here. I've always really loved computers and kind of how they work in with the design process. So this is a very natural fit for me to want to teach. I love this class. Like I said, it was the class I was originally hired to teach. I've taught a bunch of other classes, and I've always taught this class. So this is the staple class. Um, for those of you that have had me before, um, the Rhino class came later. This was the first one. I'm happy that you came back and took this one, because I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, there is a course website. Uh, it's digitaltoolsforarchitects.com or digitaltoolsfordesigners.com. It doesn't matter. They changed the course names around. So this course is now called Digital Tools for Designers. The 136 class is called Digital Tools for Architects. Um, that was a programmatic change. It used to be Digital Tools for Architects 1 and 2, but they were trying to appeal to a broader audience. So it's Digital Tools for Designers and then Digital Tools for Architects. You do not need to take them in order. Obviously, there's people in here that took the 136 um, in previous semester. It doesn't matter what order you're in. You're in this one. That's great. If you're in both, that's great too. Um, so the website has exercises. It has your assignments on it. 
You will look at all the important course information on it, the syllabus, everything else. This is not the kind of class that's run through the Canvas system or the D2L system if you're used to either of those. It's an independent website. Hopefully it works better than those sites. It certainly has a lot more content than those sites on it, I think. Um, so fingers crossed. You will also post every single one of your exercises and all of your assignments to the course website. It will become very obvious once you start doing it. The first time you do it, it'll be challenging. Then it'll start to get really easy. Okay? I also will, I have a bunch of tutorials that have written up step by step. This is how you do certain things, uh, et cetera. That's all on there. There's little walkthrough videos. I try my very best to record every lecture that I give so that you can go back and watch what I did if you forgot it or you missed the day or whatever. That is not a substitute for you coming to class. Right? This is definitely not an online class, so I'm expecting you to be here, but it's a backup. Right? It gives you extra information when you need it, um, et cetera. Uh, tutorials, lectures. And the other thing that we're going to do is comment on other students' work. And I think this is something that's very, very important. And I'll explain how this fits into the fabric of the class uh, a little bit later. But the idea here is that you, number one, need to get feedback on your work. And when you do an exercise, it's just not possible for me to constantly give you feedback as an individual. I have too many students. Um, so what I ask you to do is to comment on three other students' work. And by doing that, you get feedback on your own work because somebody's commenting on your work. But you're also learning how to describe what's good or bad about a particular design decision in a constructive way. So I don't want the comments that are, oh, this is pretty. Right? That's, that's garbage. Right? I, don't, I don't care that it's pretty. I want to know why. I want to know what compositional technique makes it good, or what technique might make it better. Right? That's constructive comments, and we'll get into that. So this is what the course website looks like. Um, you guys will all go there. We'll look at it a little bit later. I'll walk you through it, et cetera. If you've been in the class before, it's exactly the same. Okay? So the class schedule, you're obviously all here. That's good. Uh, it's Monday and Wednesday. We go 8 to 8.50-ish for lecture, 9 to 10.50 for lab. It's very unusual that my lecture will finish exactly at 8.50. Okay? The, one of the benefits of having this kind of a class is I can fluctuate the lecture time. In the beginning of the semester, it might be a little bit shorter. Towards the end of the semester, it might be a little bit longer. It just depends on what I'm trying to go through. Okay? Um, this, one, this class isn't too bad because it's in the morning. You probably already had your breakfast. Right? There is the possibility, as the semester goes on, of course, all of you are wide awake right now. Okay, I know. You know, it's the first day of the semester. You're anxious. You like woke up early. All that kind of good stuff. But there will come a point in time in the semester where you will be walking in, and I'll see half of you like this, drooling. Okay, that point in time is a good sign that you need coffee or caffeine. Okay, so because this is a morning class, there's no problem with you going and getting those kinds of beverages that might help you, or bringing those kinds of beverages. Right. Try to make sure it has a lid on it if it's in the lab. I'm not super strict about food or drinks in the lab. If somebody else comes in and tells you otherwise, I'll claim ignorance, <laughs> right? But I want you to stay awake. So if you have it, try to put a lid on it, though. You know, no, you know, big cups of water pouring on the computers equals bad news. So lids, good. If you need to go get a coffee, right, try to save it for the break between lecture and lab. Whenever that is, it's a good time to run out for a few minutes. If you need to go to the bathroom, et cetera, you know, try to do that. Once we get to the lab portion of the class, um, this is fundamentally a college class. If you need to take a break, you need to go to the bathroom, don't ask me. Just go do it. Right? Generally speaking, if it's during my lecture, I'd prefer that you not leave. It's a little distracting to have people get up. Right? But when it's, once it's the lab time, it's a little bit more flexible. Like I said. Office hours on Monday are 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Wednesday will be 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, So I try to be here a lot. It's not like it's strict where, oh my god, I'm not going to talk to you, and you want to talk to me on Monday afternoon. Okay, If I'm here, I'll talk to you. I'm not that kind of person. So what are we going to learn in this class? Uh, we're going to work primarily in the Adobe suite, so Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. We will cover AutoCAD and SketchUp as well. Those of you that have taken Rhino may or may not uh, like the SketchUp portion of the class. Uh, a lot of times, once you've done the Rhino class, you hate SketchUp. We'll work through that and make you survive. Um, a lot of you uh, probably have done some work in SketchUp before. The hope is that I'll make you better in SketchUp than you already are. Okay? Uh, there's a few other things that we'll touch on. Hugin is a, is a um, 
panoramic stitching application. I like to introduce that a little bit. Um, we'll do a little bit of Acrobat PDFs, that kind of, kind of thing, just so you get your feet wet. But the primary thing is Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, AutoCAD, SketchUp. Right? The other thing that's important to note about this class is we might work on Photoshop for, say, three weeks. Right? We start in Photoshop. And then we move on to InDesign. It's not a point in time where you can just forget everything you learned about Photoshop. The assumption at that point is any image that you use in InDesign, you will have post-processed in Photoshop and made look good. Right? So everything is meant to build on itself. You should get better and use more as the semester goes on. The right way to use the software is to use all of them at once. Right? And so that's what we're going to try to teach you to do. There is a book that for this class. It's the Digital Tools for Architects Handbook. Um, it's available through an online publisher, lulu.com. It is not available in the bookstore. If you bought it for a previous semester, you can use the same book, even if it's an older version of the book. Um, the reason that I, I recommend this is it has all of the tutorials and all of the step-by-steps for everything that I do in it. Right? If you have it with you, if you bring it to class, you can make notes in the margins. You can keep track of things. Um, and that'll help you as you go forward. Um, all too often, students move on. They go to Berkeley. They go to Cal Poly. Right? And they, they go, oh, I, I remember that Grant did this clipping mask thing. And I never figured out why it was important when I was at DVC. And, and now that I'm here, I really want to remember how to do it. Well, if you have the book, you can go back and re remember, oh, yeah, this is how he did it. Okay? Um, Lulu.com slash spotlight slash DTFA. That'll get you to the website where you can buy it. By all means, do a Google search for Lulu coupon codes and try to get yourself a discount or free shipping. Um, so you can, a lot of times, if you guys pool together and you order a bunch of books, it'll save you on the shipping cost. Like, there's ways of, of doing it. The publisher sets the prices, so you know, the more you can get a discount from them, the better. Okay? So I'd like to throw that out there if you're, if you're interested. There is also a recommended textbook for the class. It's called The Layout Workbook by Kristen Cullen. It's only a recommended edition um, because it really only touches on the InDesign or graphic design portion of the class, which is only about three weeks. Right? Um, it's great for guidelines to your portfolio, how you're going to lay out certain work. Uh, a lot of the lectures that I give in the graphic design section of the class pertain directly to this book. Right? So they fit nicely together. Um, but it's not required, so you don't have to go buy it. Okay? I have a copy if you want to borrow it. Um, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Uh, but it can be a useful resource. One of the great things about architecture classes, and a lot of you uh, are just you know, getting your feet wet deciding if this is the right major for you or not. Um, one of the great things about architecture classes is we don't have the giant math textbook that costs $300 right, or $150. We tend to throw out little books like this that might cost 30 bucks. Right? And a lot of times, they're full of pictures. So they're really fun to look at, as opposed to really boring to look at. Right? And so that's one of the advantages. In this class, I'm going to require that you have a flash drive. We'll get to that. So that's your other big expense. You know, what's that going to be? 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. It's, just, it's not that expensive. Right? So these kinds of things are certainly beneficial. You might want a hard drive, though. Anyway, so grading. This is always the, the critical question. Right? How does this grading work in the class? How do I get my grades, et cetera? There is no midterm test for this class. There is no final exam test for this class. I'm not going to sit you down and test your computer skills. Right? Though I have been tempted, but I won't, I promise. So your grade is going to be based on, number one, your lab exercises. And I'll talk about what each of these mean in a, in a, in a second so you have an understanding. That is worth 20% of your overall grade. Then you have assignments. There will probably be six or seven assignments. I always say six or seven, maybe eight, because I'm not exactly sure how things are going to play out and how you guys are going to be. I try to adjust the class based on how you guys do. Okay? Um, so I can't tell you how much each assignment is worth, but collectively, they'll be worth 40% of your grade. There will be a final portfolio for this class that will show all of your work for this class and any other work that you think is relevant to put in your final portfolio. That will be worth 30% of your overall grade. Okay, So it's a big chunk. And it's not worth just putting it off until the last second when you're too stressed out about all your finals to work on it. Right? So we'll start working on it in about October. And we'll keep working on it through the end of the semester. So it's not something that I'm just going to drop on you and, and hope you survive. Right? We're going to make sure that it, it turns out well. And then your participation, and that's worth 10% of your overall grade. 
I try very hard with this class, similar to my other class for those of you that have taken that, to make the workload very even, very consistent. Okay? This one probably even more so than the Rhino class uh, in terms of consistent workflow. Basically, if you're here and you're doing the work, you're going to do the bulk of the work in class during the lab section. The assignments will take some time out of class, which means you'll have to work in here, or you'll work, work in the computer lab across the way, or you'll work in ET124, up to you which one's open, you, and, and do a little bit of outside work. Chances are there'll be some time to work on your, your actual assignments in class um, anyway. So you, you'll be able to get a fair amount of it done in class. Okay? So let's talk about these in, in a little bit more depth. Exercises, like I said, will be worth 20% of your overall grade. They are very much a pass, not pass sort of thing. You do it, you get 100%. You don't do it, you get a zero. Nothing in between. Okay? These are excellent padding for your grade. Right? This is a good thing. So all you have to do is be here, do the exercise, and you'll get credit for it. Okay? There will come a point in the semester where I'll give you a grade sheet and you will have forgotten or missed a few of the exercises along the way. And it's probably because you just forgot to post them or whatever. That's OK. You just post them. You'll get credit for them. Okay? But I don't want there to be big holes. Right? If you're not showing up, not doing the work, obviously your grade's going to suffer because of that. Okay? They are based on learning specific computer skills. Right? So today, for example, we're going to register and we're going to make a post on the website. If you register and you make a post on the website, you get 100% doesn't matter what you post or if your grammar's terrible or you misspelled something, it doesn't matter, right? You made your post, you get your credit, okay? We'll get to the contrast with the, uh, the exercise in a second, right? The reason that I do it this way is I want you to feel completely free to experiment and try different stuff, and if it really turns out ugly, that's okay because you're learning the process. When it comes to the assignments, we care how it turns out. Right? But in the exercises, you just do something, you see how it turns out, you learn the skills, you practice. That's the most important thing. Assignments, on the other hand, tend to be a little bit larger. They tend to combine whole sections of skills into one, into one assignment, so I'm expecting you to do a lot of different things. It's graded uh, as 40, for collectively, all the assignments are worth 40% of your overall grade. So they're roughly 6 or 7% each, ish. But it depends on how many there's going to be. The assignments are graded based on the skills that you use, but also on the end product. How good does it look? Right? Does the photo that you post process look really good? Right? Does it have good composition? Those kinds of things are a factor in your grade as well. Generally speaking, the grades for assignments are a little bit lower okay, than obviously the 100% that you're getting for exercise, but it all balances out in the end. Okay? Inevitably, you do an assignment and you don't do particularly well on it and you're really frustrated. Okay, well one of the things about design is learning from your mistakes. So I believe that you should have a second chance. Okay? I do not offer any kind of extra credit or any of that sort of thing, but on any of these extra or any of these assignments, right? It rec hear me clearly, any one of them, right? You can pick any of them. You can redo them. So you can redo assignment 101, you can redo assignment 102. You can redo assignment 103, and you can redo assignment 104. Okay? When you resubmit it, so the idea is you submit it once, you got a C. Ugh, don't really like that. Want to do it again? Right? You read my comments, you ask some of your friends, what do you think? What, how could I improve it? You do it again. When you give it to me as a resubmit, I will not grade it until the last day of the semester. Okay? That's the point that I grade it. That's how it's fair. You only get one shot at it. And your grade can go up or it can go down depending on how you do. Okay? So it's not just an automatic, oh, I'm going to get a better grade. Right? If you do a lousy job, you're going to get a worse grade. Okay? So you want to make it better. You want to learn from your mistakes, in which case you deserve to be rewarded and get a better grade. The other thing that happens is if you think you're going to do one of these regrades on a particular assignment and you wait until the last week of the semester, you will not have time to do it. I promise you. Okay? So if you want to do a regrade, go ahead and do it and submit it. Okay? But again, I'll only do the regrade at the end of the semester, okay? um, which we can see here. So the final portfolio, this is the final project of the class. Right? You'll work on it starting in about October all the way through the end of the semester. I expect it to be a really good, nice body of work. Portfolios are critical in the design fields. 
Whether you're in architecture, you're in graphic design, uh, you're in industrial design, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to make portfolios of your work so that you can show future employers, future schools, this is me, this is my work, this is what I do. Okay? So this is your first stab at it. How many people already have a portfolio? Okay. Good. A few of you. I see a few half hands. That's good. Okay. That gives us something to start from. Those of you that have, don't have a portfolio and have never done it, you will then have one. Chances of this portfolio being your final portfolio to apply to grad school, probably not very high. Right? Um, and we'll go through it. We'll have lectures about it and whatever. It took me seven full portfolios before I decided on the one for grad school. So it takes time, it takes practice, it takes iteration. But this is at least a first stab. We'll do a lot of things where I'll ask you to bring in printed copies and I'll redline them to make sure that they're turning out well. Uh, I've been rather disappointed in the last two or three semesters at the quality of the portfolios. They've been rushing at the end. So we're going to change things up a little bit this semester and we're going to make you actually get some printed versions ahead of time, make them look good, really go through the details so that you get good quality results. Okay? Um, so. Any, uh, yes, OK. Course participation. So number one, you have to be here. You can't participate in the class if you're not here. So I have an expectation that you're here. This is a college class, right? And this is one of the best things about college. This is a college class. You should want to be taking this class, right? No more of those high school days where you had to take you know, algebra or something. Well, some of you have to take that here. But the point is, this is one of those classes that you should be here and want to take. Right? So I get the fortune of teaching that class, which is good. Okay? So after each exercise and each assignment, you will also need to comment on three of your fellow students' work. Okay? So it's three separate comments for each day. Today, I will only make you comment on one student. Right? Be, and actually, I'm not even going to make you do it today. We'll all do it together next class. Okay? So you'll learn. You'll get the, the, the idea behind it. But Generally speaking, after each exercise and each assignment, you're going to have three comments to do. There are a few exercises and assignments along the way where everybody does the exact same thing because I'm trying to teach a specific skill. Those will be exempt from the comments. Okay? Generally speaking, as the semester winds down, it's about 80 or 81 total comments, something like that. Okay? I don't want bad comments. I don't want the, this is pretty, you know, it's really nice you used red. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. Right? These are designed for you to actually have to make constructive feedback to each other, to be able to critique each other, and to really improve each other's work. Okay? So I want you to take your time and make good comments. If you set it up, this is how I recommend doing it. Okay? Generally speaking, I start the class a few minutes late. I always do, because I'm waiting for people to trickle in because I don't want to start lecturing until everybody's here. So if you come in, right? you log into your computer, first thing you can do, do your comments for the previous day. It's either three or six comments. You get in the habit of doing that every time. You're never behind in the comments. You're always current. Life is great. Okay? So it makes life really easy if you just get in the habit of doing it. And I'll remind you the first several times that that's what you should be doing. Okay? So it's really easy at that point. So between you being here, 5%, right, and doing the comments, 5%, that equates to the 10% participation part of your grade. Okay? Materials. These computers were just all re-imaged. Um, so we're running Windows 10 now. You will have a specific login. We used to have a generic login where the computers would just come on. Now you have to actually log in as you. They're trying to improve security somehow. That means you also need to make sure you log yourself out when you leave. <laughs> right? Hint, hint. Okay? The other thing that you'll notice is the, the first day today when we, when we start logging in and whatever, every time you open a program, it'll be like the first time you've ever logged in. And it'll take forever. Okay? Because of that, we're going to do something a little bit different this semester. We're actually going to assign seats. So you'll have the same computer every day that you come into class. And we will unfreeze for one day, let you log in, open all the applications, get through all of those initial setups, and that stuff won't happen anymore. Then we'll lock the computers again. And when you come and log into that computer, you won't have to go through the process again. Okay? But it will only be on that particular computer in this lab. Okay? So it's just something to be aware of that, that that's something we're trying to work through. Okay? Um, but these computers are frozen. So if you save something, say, on the desktop of these computers, even though you logged into your account, if you save something on the desktop, the power goes out, 
the computer restarts, you forget about it, and you leave it there, and the computer restarts, any of that stuff is going to be gone. So because of that, you need to have a flash drive or a portable hard drive to attach to the computer right? that you can save your work on and, and work with. Okay? Um, generally speaking, I'd say the minimum size for something like this is 32 gigs. Okay? 32 gig flash drive is like 10 bucks. Like they're not expensive anymore. I mean, I remember when a one gig was like 150, right? So it's, it's cheap. You can get a 32 gig. A lot of people, and I've noticed this, this progression, a lot more people are just buying a little portable external hard drive, you know, one of those little bricks and plugging that in so you have even more space. Those tend to be a little bit more expensive, maybe 50 to 100 bucks, but you get a lot more space out of it. You can store all your work and you don't run out of space. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. We'll talk about backing up your work and making sure you don't lose the flash drive or leave the flash drive in your pocket and it goes through the wash or that kind of stuff. But uh, generally speaking, you're going to want something to store your information on. I'm going to request that you get whatever this thing is that you're going to store your information on by next class, by Wednesday, because that's when you're going to start saving stuff. If you can't get it by next Wednesday, you could probably survive one more time by emailing stuff to yourself or whatever, but certainly by next Monday you should have this, and it should come with you every day. Okay? Um, we already talked about safeguarding it. We will do some digital camera work. We'll do some photography work in the class. Almost everybody has a phone that has a decent quality camera in it now, so this used to be a big deal. Now it's not so much a big deal. If you have a nice uh, digital SLR or a nice point and shoot camera, and you want to work with that, by all means, bring it in. If you really hate your phone or it has a cracked lens and you can't take good pictures or whatever, we'll at least pair you up with somebody that has something decent, okay? Because I want you to have the experience of actually shooting some photos, okay? So a few general guidelines for the class. Uh, if you miss two or more weeks, you may be withdrawn from the class, okay? Uh, a lot of the other instructors' syllabi will say you will be, okay? The truth is, and I, I like to share this with you on the first day, and I'm not trying to scare you or give you the doom and gloom speech or any of the rest of it, but I think it's important. Number one, this is a college class. When you get in college, you are completely responsible for yourself. If you move on and you, you end up going to Berkeley or you go to Cal Poly, there will not be somebody who holds your hand anymore. Okay, you just came from high school, you had a counselor, you had teachers, not all of you just came from high school, but you know, a fair number of you have done that, right? They walk you through. They say, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Are you taking the right class or whatever? Right? It's really, really easy to get lost in college. So you have to be on your A game and think about this stuff. Okay? That being said, if you don't come to class or you don't turn in your assignments, right, you'll probably fail the class. Should be obvious, right? Okay? If you feel like you're doing really bad, withdraw yourself from the class. Right? You'll get grade sheets periodically throughout the semester. You'll get like eight of them. Okay, that'll tell you how you're doing. If you're looking at the grade sheet, you're missing a bunch of work, you haven't turned in assignments, they're late, and you're going, oh no, I'm not going to do well, get yourself out of the class. Best decision, right? You can withdraw and take it again, okay? Don't rely on me to withdraw you, right? You are in charge of your own school, you withdraw yourself. Make sense? Clear? Okay, I like to lay that out, right? The truth is, I would rather fail you than withdraw you because I think this is the lesson you need to learn. But anyway, no doom and gloom. You're all, you're all going to get A's. Maybe. I hope so. Right? That's the idea. OK. So if you don't finish work, grades are bad. Real obvious. Assignment due dates are announced in class. They'll appear on the course calendar. We'll talk about that. You can actually subscribe to the course calendar and have it on your phone so you won't lose anything. You'll know when stuff is due, et cetera. Okay? When something is due, it's due before the start of class. So I don't want you coming in and posting it while I'm lecturing. It's due before I start lecturing. And it will be marked late if it's after I start lecturing. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, if you don't turn it in on time, it'll be subject to the late work policy, which will be the next slide. We'll talk about late work. Uh, generally speaking, exercises are due on the day that they're assigned. So I give you exercise 101 today. You do it. It should be done by 10.50, the end of class. Sometimes people need a little extra time. I will not penalize you for taking a little extra time. Right? Try, try to turn it in a timely manner. Finish it that night. Finish it the next day. Life is good. Okay. 
So late work. This is one thing that I am extraordinarily strict on, okay? Because nobody wants late work. In the real world, if you're working as an architect and you have a deadline, let's say you have to submit a set of plans to the city, right, or, or some city, right, they have a hard deadline. They say you have to submit your plans by 4 p.m. on this day or you won't be on the design review hearing meeting. Right? It's a hard deadline. It doesn't mean you can turn them in at 4.01. It means they better be in by 4. Okay? So when I say an assignment is due before the start of class, I mean it. That's when it's due, and you need to get it done. Okay? So we're not going to let that slide. So there is a very punitive late work policy in this class. If you miss the first deadline, you drop 10%, so one letter grade. You had an A, you get a B. Okay? You miss two days. So again, let's say, it's, let's say something was due today. Okay? It's not. Don't panic. Okay? Let's say something was due today. You didn't turn it in. If you turn it in up until the start of next class, so Wednesday's class, when I start lecture, if you turn it in before then, you only lose 10%. Okay? If you turn, if you turn it in later in the day on Thursday, or any time up until the following class, you drop another 10%. So you just went from an A to a C, just by a couple days. Okay? So, be careful. Turn it in on time. Remember, you have the regrade. Turn something in. right? Part of life. So uh, after four days, you see the math, the way it trickles out. right? I don't go below 50%. If you turn it in at some point at the end of the semester, even if it's really, really late, I'll give you half credit. That's it. Okay? But half credit is a whole lot better than a zero. So at least turn something in. OK, a few other guidelines for the class. Um, I'll be here. Obviously, all, all lab period, I float around and I try to answer all of your questions as fast as I can, as quickly and as efficiently as I, I can. A lot of you have been in my classes before. You understand that I work hard to get around to all of you, right? But if right, you have a question and I'm on this side of the room and you're over there and I'm working my way to you, don't just sit and do this. Because you could sit like this for 30 minutes waiting for me, OK? Turn to your neighbor next door and say, hey, do you know how to do this? Right? Ask them. Do a quick Google search. Pull up the book. Look at the tutorial videos online. Right? I have lots of things so that you don't have to be stuck waiting for me. Right? It has nothing to do with me not wanting to help you. I want to help you. But there's 30 of you and one of me. It's really hard to get to all of you. But I'll try my best. Okay? So instead of just sitting like this, you can sit like this, but at least lean over to your neighbor and say, do you know how to do this? Right, because you might get unstuck enough to keep moving, right? And then you can ask me a more relevant question later on when I get over to your section, okay? So, I, like I said before, I suggest you take notes in the handbook um, so that you, as I'm lecturing, as I'm talking through things, it will help you to jog your memory about those things that I was doing, right? The other thing is that I try, and I told you this earlier, I try really hard to record everything that I say, every lecture, et cetera. Stuff goes wrong, right? My microphone runs out of batteries. Uh, the recording crashes when I do it. Uh, stuff happens, right? And even as much as I try, you know, at least one lecture will be ruined at some point this, this semester. It's just the way it works, OK? So the good news is there's a whole backlog of the same lectures that I've given before. The numbers might change, but I try to collect them all in one place so that you guys can go back a couple semesters and see the one that I talked about or, or whatever. Okay. The other thing that happens is I try to process them as fast as I can. Usually I get them up the same day. Sometimes it's a day delay in the process. But if you really needed something, just look at the one from last semester. Okay. And we'll talk about where you find them and, and that sort of thing as well. Okay. Um, like I said before, watching the recordings is not the same thing as being in class. Don't not come to class and just watch all the recordings. It won't work. You can't ask me questions. You can't stop, if I'm not, stop me if I'm not being clear. Right? Those are the things that are really important for you to be able to do and what being in class allows you to do. Okay? Uh, I think it's also important that you guys know I am not the kind of person that wants to be unapproachable or I'm up here on the pedestal. Right? There are times when I say stuff that doesn't make sense. Stop me and say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Right? And let me go back through it. Or wait a minute, you did that way too fast. Right? Do that again. Right? That's how everybody learns. If you think I was confusing, chances are there are at least one or two other people in this class that thought I was confusing. So don't be afraid to speak up, ask me questions, that sort of thing. It's important. It's part of the learning process. Um, everything that you post in this class is covered under a Creative Commons license. 
I had one semester maybe five years ago where somebody was really hung up on their work and you know owning copyright to the work and whatever. Basically, we all collaborate in this class. You're learning skills. Be happy. Right? Don't worry about it. Okay? But I have to put that up there now. So let's look at some previous student work just so you can kind of see some of the things that we're, we're, we're going to be doing um, and being aware. We're going to start in the world of photography. We'll talk a lot about composition. We'll talk, talk a lot about post-processing techniques. What do we do to create mood in a particular photo? Right? How do we enhance shadows? How do we dodge and burn? Sorry. I tend to talk really loud. They get cranky. Right? You know, how, do we, how do we change from color to black and white? Those kinds of things. Right? And, and what makes a good composition, et cetera. Then we'll get into advanced photo editing. Right? And this is really the precursor to being able to do good collage work in architectural design in that we'll take things that don't belong together and we'll put them together. Right? Which is really, it's kind of fun. Right? You can make yourself into a different person. Right? You can end up doing very creepy things. Um, sometimes they end up being a little bit more artistic. That's fine. The point is that you're learning a lot about how do you combine things, how do you do things that are different, how do you combine different mediums uh, in the world of, of Photoshop. Um, and we'll talk a lot about light settings and what do certain light settings do and how can you mask off certain pieces and, and make other pieces appear uh, and that sort of thing. Then we'll move into layout and graphic design. Uh, in, this, in this phase, we're going to end up doing in all likelihood, a poster, like a lecture series poster. But it'll have to do with typography, text, images. How do you combine them together? How do you make it really clear? What happens at the composition, et cetera? And you can see from the examples that I'm showing you, there are a variety of ways of solving those. And of course, the examples that I'm showing you all happen to be good examples. But the point is that you'll learn a lot about how this stuff works. How does it come together? And you'll learn it through the world of Adobe InDesign, which is something that's absolutely critical that you know as, a, as an architecture student. A few more. Then we'll move into AutoCAD. Right? We'll learn about how do you draft, right? how do you do basics. How many people have used AutoCAD before? A okay. few of you. Some of you, it might be review. The, the hope is that I at least learn, I at least teach you a few things that you don't know. Right? But I think we've debated having AutoCAD in the class for, for a while. And I think it's something that's really important prior to you taking 121, which is your first kind of big studio class. Um, so I'm going to get you prepped for the stuff that you need in 121. Um, the stuff that turns out in AutoCAD is never the, the best. It's never the most attractive. But it certainly will, will get you your feet wet and, and let you work through AutoCAD and understand kind of the basics of it. Uh, we will talk about collaging stuff in Illustrator from AutoCAD. So we'll work through Illustrator. We will do some graphic design stuff uh, or uh, layout, brain, logos. We'll do logos. That's what I, That was the L word I was looking for. Wasn't coming out. We'll do some 3D modeling and some collage work. Um, this is, all this 3D modeling is done in SketchUp. Uh, but we'll work a lot with backgrounds and, and dropping them in and making things feel realistic, feel like they belong in a particular scene. Um, such that they start to integrate nicely. Right? Some of these are better than others. We'll talk about basic architectural views, plans, sections, elevations, and perspectives. And you'll work through each of those options. Um, we'll talk about collaging people into scenes. We'll add shadows to people so they feel like they're integrated into the scene. We'll study how the light conditions work in a particular scene, match up our renderings, et cetera. So there's really a lot that you can do. We'll talk about creating mood in a particular drawing and lighting in a particular drawing, artificial lighting, right? all of those sorts of things. And I'll walk you through all of those steps in, in terms of how they, how they play out. So I'll end with the question of what will you create. And I like to end with that question because, you know, like I said, I've, I've been teaching this class for 18 semesters or nine years. right? And you would think that I'd be bored of it by now. And the truth is that I'm not. And the reason that I'm not is because of all of you. Every semester, I get a different group of students. They bring a different group of skills to the class. They have a different set of values or ideas or things uh, relating to design that they want to learn or that they bring to the table. And that makes it interesting. Right? I get very inspired by the stuff that you guys do. And so I think it's really kind of a fun mutual relationship. And I, I really 
genuinely look forward to the semester because I think you guys will create really great things. Okay? So I probably went a little long today. Yeah, not too bad. 8.53. Pretty close. Okay? So we're going to take a break, right? Come back at, let's say, uh, 9.05 or so. I like to give you a long break on the first day. Um, if you walked in late, make sure you come up and tell me who you are so that I can check you off on the, on the roll sheet. Uh, then we'll come back. I'll walk you through the website. We'll talk about um, the first exercise. We'll get you through that. Okay? On your way out, if you would bring me up those little surveys, and we'll put them back in the envelope so that I can deliver those. Okay. All right, so we're just going to go with it. This is an example of sometimes the recordings might not work. <laughs> so uh, no, no promises uh, as to the audio. I'm having trouble with it. Um, OK, so we're going to start today with your exercise 101. And so you will get a handout like this each day um, that will walk you through what we're doing for a particular day um, with step-by-steps or at least references to where um, you can find information for what we're doing today. Um, and so I'm going to start with the, the website so that you have a sense of, of what's there and, and where certain things are. And I'll, I'll walk through it with you. Uh, I will also tell you that inevitably, the website crashes the first day. It always happens. And then it works fine the rest of the semester. So go figure. But we're going to try our best. And hopefully, it won't crash. Uh, I've opened a bunch of tabs already so that you can kind of see things without me having to wait. Um, and then we'll get through it. How many, is everybody logged into the computers now? No? Not yet? OK, so if you need to log in, you're going to type in ac.portal backslash, and then this is your insight username. So for me, it's G for my first name, Adams, and then the last three of my ID. OK? And so you use that as your, as your username and then whatever your insight password is. So everybody in other than Sean? Yes, do we need a little more time? I want to make sure everybody's in first. Take a quick walk and make sure. It's working on it. You guys are going. All right. We seem to be in good shape, so that's good. So let me walk through um, the, the website a little bit. Uh, the home page, when you, when you first come in, um, there's a menu structure that's very typical, used to the same kinds of things that you're seeing. I'll talk you through what those are. Um, these student work section, those will change depending. You'll start to see as you guys post that your work will show up there. Uh, if you were to click on the more student work, you can see um, all the student work in the reverse chronological order that it was posted. Uh, the book, if you click this link, it'll take you to the website, so you don't even have to remember where the book would be. Uh, there's a little introduction, and then every time I post a lecture, uh, generally speaking, it, there's a little uh, tweet that says, I posted the lecture, and here's the link to it. Uh, at the very bottom is um, a bunch of Instagram stuff that people post uh, where they tag it, Digital Tools for Arch. Uh, because those are former students doing work and, and showing off their work. Um, so you can see what, what other people are doing and, and hopefully get inspired. So that's the home page for you. Um, as we go across the, the list here, under About, you'll see Digital Tools for Architects. You guys are always looking for Archie 135 because this is the first class. Technically, I should change this to say Digital Tools for Designers. You see that this is still the old school way of referring to it. Okay. Uh, underneath 135, we have a syllabus, which you guys all received a paper copy of. But if you throw it away and <laughs> want it again, it's here. You can print it. Uh, there is a course calendar. Uh, and there's, a, there's the calendar feed so that you can subscribe to it. We'll talk all about that next class. So you don't have to worry about it, but it's there should you need it. The next tab over is lectures. You guys, again, will be concerned with the first option here, A135. Uh, fall of 2016 will be your lectures. If you were to click on that fall of 2016, oh, here's the syllabus if you guys needed to see it in digital form. If you were to click on the lectures, 
this is the page that you will get to. There's a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it if you wanted to, um, but you don't have to. Here's lecture 101. That's the one that's for today. As we go 102, 103, um, basically the way I divide my first class from my second class, so this class from the Rhino class, is everything 10 whatever, 100s is all you guys. Everything 200s is the other class, right? So it's easy to see. Um, so anyway, there's lecture 101. If I were to click on lecture 101, right, it'll bring you to this page. You can see that there is no recording yet available for this particular video. It will, it will be posted later today. Under previous lecture videos, you can see some of them didn't work. So there's a few missing ones. Obviously, uh, this is our lecture this semester. But you could go back in time and see older lectures basically covering the same stuff. Okay. Now, why on the course introduction lecture you need to go back and watch a new course, I don't know. But they're there. Okay. And you could see when we went further along, you'd see it. Um, there's also lecture downloads. So if you wanted to see, for example, the slides um, that I showed today, you can click on those and you can get a PDF of all the slides to see. Uh, and in this case, there's an extra link to the course syllabus if you were interested in that. Okay. As we move over to the next section, under exercises, if we went to fall 2016, we'd get this page. Okay. So exercise 101, registration and first post, this is what we're going to be working on today. This is the handout that you got. If you click on it, you'll get the digital version of exactly what I handed you in print form. The nice thing about the digital version is I try to make the links live so you can just click on the links and go wherever you need to go. Okay? Uh, but it is there. At the bottom, there's a PDF if you wanted to reprint this for some reason, if you lost it. Right? The other thing that happens is let's say you missed a day of class and you needed to go back. I don't keep extra handouts of anything. So if you need a handout because you missed it, just go online. They're there. You can print it yourself. Okay? So this is essentially what we're doing today. As we move over into the assignment section, I haven't actually clicked on anything yet. And you'll see that it's the, there is no fall 2016. There hasn't been an assignment yet. That whole section doesn't exist. But the assignments will be posted. The PDF for the assignment will be posted, et cetera. Okay? When we move over a little bit further under resources, these are things you're probably not going to use just yet. Uh, but these are things that may be relevant as you go a little bit forward. They're just extra stuff that I have for you. And I'll point it out when you need it. Okay? The next column here is student work. And under student work, if we went, for example, to, to digital tools for designers, we went to exercises, and we went to exercise 101. And if I were to click on it, I don't know whether it's going to load. It might. This is all the work that was posted for exercise 101. Okay? Most of this was last semester's work. But if we keep going back in time, we can see semester, 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 et cetera. Okay? So these are all posts. So you can, at any point in time, go back and see any particular assignment or exercise, depending on what you wanted to look for. So if you wanted, for example, if you went to student work, you went to assignments, you wanted to see stuff that people posted for, oh, I don't know, assignment 102, we could go back in time and we could see the work that people have done for assignment 102. Okay. So it's all there, should you want to see it. The last button over here is Login. And this is where you're going to log in. The other thing that you'll notice is there, are, there is content that's hidden behind the login, uh, because this is a website that's open to anybody. Anybody can look at it. There are certain things that I give you, or handouts that I give you, that won't show up unless you're logged in. There'll be a little banner that goes across the top of the page that says, you know, guess what, you're not logged in. If you want to see the premium content, click here, right, and you log in. Uh, you may have already seen that if you were browsing around a little bit. We're going to get you all accounts right now. Um, so let me go to the login. Hold on, I have to switch browsers because that one I'm logged in. So if you click on login, you'll get this page that says, please log in with your username and email uh, and then your password. Okay? You guys are going to click on this register link. Um, if you already were in 136 before, or you're retaking 135 or whatever, and you already have an account, don't make another account. Just use your account. Right? So this is all really boring for you, and you can just pretend you're sleeping or something. Okay? Um, so don't need a new account. For those of you that have never had an account, you do need an account. Um, so you're going to click on Register, which will take you here. When you type in your username, try to make it something related to your name. I have to figure out who you are based on your username. And if you do, you know, hot sexy daddy one two three, I might not who know who hot sexy daddy one two three is. Okay, so you know, like Grant Adams, 
or something along those lines would be helpful, right? <laughs> so please do that. Um, uh, your username, your email address, okay? If you use a Gmail address, which a lot of you will, there's a pretty high probability that your first password will go into your spam folder, which is fine. You just have to make sure you click in your spam folder to see it. I've just I've seen it so many times that I know that that typically is where Gmail puts it, okay? And then under invitation code, you're going to type DTFA student. Okay, it's written right here on the board. So you'll type that in, uh, and then you'll click on register. And what happens is it will send you an email with a temporary password that's a random string of numbers and letters, et cetera. Okay, once you click on that email, there'll be a link in the email, and it'll take you to uh, the login page where you can log in which will then take you to your personal profile page. At the bottom of your personal profile page, right? and I'll, I'll go through this again, we can go to a new password. You could click Generate Password. And you see that it gives you this ridiculously random string. right? You can type like you know, 123 or whatever and make that your password, though you do have to confirm the use of a weak password okay? if you wanted it to be something that you can remember. Anyway, I'm not changing my password, and it's not FIDO123. <laughs> okay? But the point is that it's, it's there, and, and you can do that as well. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time right, to do this, this first little bit of registration and to look, check your email and all that sort of thing, right? and then we'll keep going. All right, so it seems like the, the bulk of you are there, so that's good. So I'm going to keep moving on. Um, but if you get stuck and you can't get your username to work, we're going to solve those problems today. That's what today's for. Uh, OK, so the next piece of this puzzle is I'm going to actually ask you to make a post on the course website. So you're going to make your first post today. And in order to do that, I'm going to ask you to look for uh, an article related to design or architecture or a building or something that you think might be interesting to read. Right? Read it, and then write a brief summary about it. So. Um, maybe I'll go to Arc Daily to find something. Okay, and let's say I don't know. Maybe I like this house. Okay, so maybe this is kind of interesting to me. Maybe I'll read this article. I'm going to make a link and a post to this particular article. Okay, so I'm going to leave this open for right now. I probably need a nice image, uh, so let's see if I can make this image big. And I'm going to save the image as. I do that by right-clicking on the image. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop for now. And I'll click Save. And I'm going to use that image in my post. And I'm also going to uh, be able to post a link to this particular article right there. So I'm going to go to the Digital Tools site. And again, this will all make sense as I go forward. And when I am on the digital tool site, at any point, there's a black ribbon that goes across the top of the page. And you can see something called new with a plus sign next to it. If I click on that new, and then I go to post, right, it's going to give me this add new post little dialog box. Okay? This works an awful lot like a word processing application. It's not too, uh, not too challenging to post stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So, First thing is this is called the H3 house. Okay, so maybe I'll make the title. Oops. I'll say this is the H3 house. So I put the title up there. And then down here, I'd say, you know, I find this house interesting because of the use of concrete, blah, blah. Blah, right, you get the idea. You guys are going to write a little summary paragraph, but you need, don't need me to be sitting here writing that paragraph. Okay? And then I might say, uh, here is a link to the article. Right? Um, and then I will come over here, and I'm going to take this right here, arcdaily.com, the article. I'll right click, and I'll go ahead and say copy. And I'll come back to my post, and I'll go ahead and I'll paste it here. And it looks like a link. Okay? I would like this to actually be clickable. So I'm going to look up here at the top where I have some tools. And you see something called a, like with a little chain link on it? When I click on that, it'll actually make it a, a link, a live link, something blue that you can click. 
and I'll click this little apply button. And now I have a live link. Uh, maybe I want this link to have a little bullet point in front of it. I can add the little bullet point in front of it, much like you can in Word. Right? This should be relatively self-explanatory. Um, you know, maybe I, I should add the name of the author or the, uh, the architect. So let's see. Um, architect is Luciano Kruk. Copy. And let me paste that right there. There it is. OK, that turned out way too big. So let me undo that and see if I can paste as plain text. There we go. That's a little better. OK, and you know maybe I want this to be bold or whatever. You get the idea, right? Basic word processing. I'm not going to ask you to write essays on here, uh, but a little bit uh, wouldn't hurt. So at this point, I have the title, right? And actually, I should probably add that it's me. Doesn't really matter because I can see each of your accounts and I'll know that it's yours. Uh, but for other people, sometimes it's nice to have your name on it. Okay. Now I want to add an image to this post so that when I see it, I can see an image. So I'm going to scroll down on the right side here. And at the very bottom, there's something called Featured Image, in the bottom right corner. And there's a little link that says Set Featured Image. So I'm going to click on that. And when I do that, it's going to bring up. Uh, a little page here with a bunch of images on it. Okay? Obviously, the, the image that I'm going to use isn't here yet. I need to put it there. So I'm going to click on this text in the upper left that says Upload Files. And this is where I can either browse or I can drag a file on top of this. So I'll browse. And remember, I saved that image on the desktop. So I'll click on the image. And I'll click Open. And it's going to upload it. And as soon as it's done, we've got to give it a little time to finish. There it is. You see it has a little check mark next to it. There's a blue button in the lower right corner that says Set Featured Image. I'll go ahead and click on that. And if we wait for just a second, the image is going to show up right down here as my featured image. There it is. Okay. So I have my featured image. I have the title. I have some information about it, a little, little paragraph, et cetera a link to the article. Okay. The last piece of the puzzle is over here on the right side, there's something called categories. Okay. And so we, as I scroll down here, we're going to look for exercise 101. So there it is, exercise 101. This is part of exercises in 135. And it's part of the Digital Tools for Designers RG135 class. Right? Minimum, you need to check the box for exercise 101. Right, but it's nice if you checked all three. Okay. Once I have those checked, I'm going to come up here to the right, and I'm going to click on this Publish button. Again, it's in blue. Once I click this, it's essentially like turning in your work. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's permanent. You can go back and edit it. You find you made a mistake spelling or something like that. By all means, go back and fix it. But this is essentially like, here's my work. Right? So it's gradable at this point. So I'll go ahead and click on Publish. And we'll give it a little bit of time. Um, luckily, it doesn't appear that anything's crashed yet. So that's a good sign. Um, and there we go. And we can see at the top here, it says Post Published. And there's a little link for View the Post. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And we'll have a look at what the actual post looks like. So this is the H3 house. The post is by me. There's my image of it. right? It says it's by Grant Adams. There's the architect. Here's the link. If I were to click on this, it would take me to the Arc Daily site. There it is. Okay. So everything's working quite nicely. And there are no comments on it yet. Okay. So this is what we're looking for. You should see a little about the author with who you are next to the post. That's normal. Uh, if you don't have too much written there yet, or you don't see any of these little icons yet, or you have no picture yet, no worries. We're going to get to that. Future day. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yes? If you try to make a comment, again, you don't have to make any comments until the beginning of next class. That's when we'll walk through making a comment together. If you try to make a comment and nothing's showing up, it's because I haven't approved you yet. 
the first the first comment I have to approve, and then you can keep commenting at that point. It's so that people don't spam the site with a bunch of links to Viagra or whatever. Okay, so there there are certain things that we have to protect against. Um, so bear with me while I while I slowly approve all of you. Uh, if you have already taken 136, right, or taking 135 again, um, use your same account. But you do have to create a new post. I know this is very similar to stuff you've done before. Make sure you make a new post. It's a fresh semester. We're going to see it as a fresh semester. Okay. And I think that'll cover us. Remember to bring your flash drive or your hard drive to class on Wednesday. Right? And once you've logged in, created your first post, published your first post, verified that it published OK, you're free to go today. Okay, it's not it's not a long day. You're not going to be stuck here the whole time. Are there any questions? All right. <laughs>